Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unlock Show. I'm your host, Tracy Wilson. My pleasure to be here with you guys on another Wednesday with another amazing guest. You guys are going to be um, super excited when I tell you who I've got right here on the screen with me today. I've got Melvin So. He is coming at us today all the way from Singapore. He is a coach to many of Asia's top marketers, speakers, coaches, sales leaders, and behind the scenes, he's actually responsible for helping them make millions and millions of dollars and helping them dominate their markets. So guys, you do not want to miss this. I'm going to be asking him some really pointed questions to get all the juice on how he actually does that so that you guys can implement it in your business. And I know that Melvin is such an open person and he's willing to share all of that. I've been following him for a little while, seen all the stuff that he's been doing, and I can tell you that his clients absolutely rave about him. Melvin's client list reads like the who's who of the industry. They speak about Melvin with very high praise because of his very proven results over a long period of time. However, I'm going to say that he's told me that things weren't always this way. He had to learn every lesson at the hard and painful way, and I totally get that and understand it, Melvin. Uh, Melvin's dropped out of, he dropped out of university at age 20 because he thought you know, being a college dropout would actually help his entrepreneurial <laughs> dreams. We might delve into a little bit more about that. Little did he know he would be in for a seven-year nightmare where he made 800 bucks a month and frequently ate, you know, one meal a day. And in our case, it, that would be like porridge or rice or noodles is kind of the sort of thing that us entrepreneurs do uh, here in Australia. It wasn't until he met his mentor, uh, the legendary Marshall Thurber, who, teach, who was actually the teacher to Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, and when he did that, things started to turn around. Melvin took Marshall's wisdom to heart and he applied it, and he has been doing that relentlessly for a number of years, clocking his first five-figure uh, month rapidly, and he has never, ever looked back. So that being said, I think that gives a really good insight into you know who Melvin is, the fact that he's a go-getter. He actually learns and has applies things um, really quickly, and that has led to his ongoing massive success that I know you guys want to hear about. So welcome to the show, Melvin. I'm so pleased to have you here. Great that we're actually in a very similar time zone. Often when I have a, um, Americans or, or guys from the UK here, poor things, they end up jumping on the show at, at, uh, at midnight or some ridiculous hour in the morning. So I'm glad to have you here and you come with very high uh, recommendations from a lot of people. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank but you, Tracy. Tell us a little bit about, I mean, I want, I've got to ask, like, you know, in that um, in that introduction, you talked about this nightmare. So let's kind of start there, because that, that obviously is going to give us a bit of an insight into how this all began. And, um, you know, a lot of people then are going to be able to resonate that if you're feeling right now that you're also in the middle of the nightmare, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So tell us about how did that nightmare begin and why was it such a nightmare for you in the beginning? I think, uh, so that's a fantastic question, uh, Tracy. So first of all, I'm very excited to be here. Second of all, I think you, you mentioned about the fact that my clients appreciate what I do also. And I think the real reason they appreciate it is because I actually think without any false humility, I'm a, I'm a pretty good coach. Now, a good coach is a person who, yes, ex might have experienced success, but understands where, where they come from, understands failure, understands the struggle. And sometimes uh, if you're kind of like born rich, and you have no idea what it takes to struggle, then sometimes you might not have the perspective. I definitely have the perspective because I've been both sides of the spectrum, understanding what it means to be uh, deep down in the dirt and the butt, and also right at the very peak of success. So let's talk a little bit about how I started. Uh, so I started at age 20 years old. So when I was in school, I was always a little bit of a rebel. Right, I uh, we, we were talking before the show, and I was always that, that guy, even back then, I always asking the question, why? So we are here in Asia, there's a lot of conformity, a lot of compliance. Right? People don't really question the rules, don't question the teacher. But I was the guy. I was like, hey, uh, excuse me, why are we doing things? And, and before I do anything, it always needs to make sense to me. If I can't see the reason why we have to do something, if I can't see really uh, where this is going to lead to, or why specifically we, we, the, the rule is in place, then I'll ask a lot of questions. So uh, most of the time here in Asia, teachers don't really like to answer questions. So first of all, they didn't appreciate the fact that I was rebellious. So I went to college and university, and I started to realize one thing very, very interesting, Tracy. Have you realized that in college, especially in business or marketing courses, many of the professors never have a business before. They've never done real mm. marketing before. So, so Interesting, Tracy, that, isn't it? Yeah. So that makes no sense to me, right, Tracy? It's kind of like mm. I teach you Japanese, but I have no idea how to speak Japanese. 
or I teach you how to drive a car, but I don't have a car and I don't know how to drive a car. So my first question was, do you have a business or have you done any business or marketing? Before? The answer is no, he's been a professor his whole life. And I said, why am I learning from, from you? I said, I, am I the o- only one who I look around the entire place and nobody felt exactly the same way? Everyone was like, you know, just keep your mouth shut and just listen. I said, this does not make any sense at all. So I said, I, I told my mom after a while, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop out. I don't want to learn from a guy that hasn't done anything that he has mentioned before. So uh, then, then my mom said, uh, that's not a very smart idea here in Asia. You know, you need a degree. I said, no, I'm not going to get a degree and learn four years, five years. Listen, here. this guy who has never done what he's teaching me. And so at age three years, I decided to drop out. I decided to say, you know what? Uh, I don't want to go, right? Which is a bold step because here in Asia, everybody mm. goes through university, get a degree. It's kind of like the thing to do. So when I, and, and I was very inspired by a lot of great entrepreneurs, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mike Adele. Uh, I, I realized one thing, you see, sometimes when you're 20, you have a lot of bright ideas that are kind of stupid. But I had a bright idea. I was like, hey, look at all these uh, great entrepreneurs. They all have one thing in common. They are all college dropouts. So I said to myself, you know, the answer, the answer is a dropout. <laughs> and I'll start my business and I'll be rich because all the rich folks are college dropouts. Right? And uh, and I decided to quit. And, and I realized very quickly that there's a difference between quitting and knowing what to do. These are very different. Mm. Uh, I quit, but I didn't know what to do. So what began was me jumping around different businesses, uh, you know, wanting to succeed, but never quite finding the answer. Because I didn't know what to do. And more importantly, I was not self-aware. So I didn't know my X factor, didn't know my direction, didn't know what I stood for, didn't know what my values were. The only thing I chased was the dollar. And then yeah. the way to chase the dollar is, uh, uh, is you start to jump into things that are not suitable for you, uh, do things that are not, not aligned with you and start a whole bunch of struggle. One meal a day. Mm-hmm. And, and and the story goes on, and I love that. How interesting! I have a bit of a, a, I suppose, a bit of a giggle when you say, "Well, yeah, I was just looking, you know, did all the research, found that all these guys that were highly successful, they were just all college dropouts." So, you know, I'll just go and do that. But the the critical point you make here is that when you you quit something, you need to know like what. So, if you're not going to do that, what are you going to do? What is the next step that you're going to take? And then that nightmare begins with, oh, well, maybe I'll just kind of try this and I'll try that and I'll try this, uh, not really knowing or understanding, you know, what the pathway is to start creating your success. I, I want to go here now because you've alluded to this now. You've talked about, you know, you, you would have had this breakthrough moment where you were like, hang on a minute, all these things that I've been doing, I'm in a nightmare right now because these are just as much as I might be making money, okay, because they're making money that, like you say, that's one thing, but I'm actually not enjoying what I'm doing. I don't like this. It's not It's not totally aligned with me. Tell us about that moment. When was the, when was the moment where you, where you realized that, gosh, you know, I'm having some success. I'm yeah. doing okay, but I'm just not fulfilled with this. This is just rubbish. Yeah, so I think... I think I wish it was just like you know I was making money, but uh, but 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 not feeling happy. I think it was it was I was neither making money nor <laughs> happy because uh because when when I'm not self aware, I start jumping into things that I think are a good idea because somebody said so, and I think the mm-hmm. sense of grounding is very important as an entrepreneur. Self awareness is very important as an entrepreneur. Understanding what makes what where your talents are very important. So I give you an example. So I quit at age 20. What happens in the next seven years is I jump around from different businesses, right? The first thing I I, I did was eBay, right? Because I thought, hey, you know what? Some I saw a speaker go up there and say, you know what, eBay, huge marketplace, make a lot of money, right? This was really long ago before before different platforms were added. So eBay was the thing. Then uh, I did that for a while, didn't, didn't get a bunch of success. Felt, hey, you know, it's not for me. I jumped on the network marketing, right? Nothing against net, network marketing, but I didn't even know which area of network marketing I was very interested in. So someone said there was a gel product, a powder product, you know, an e-commerce product, an e-learning product, and I'll just go and promote it. And you know, I promote it, I wouldn't have that much heart or drive to stay on. So I'm making a, a few dollars here and there, and I'll jump on to, to the next thing. Someone said create digital e-books. This was back in 2008, right? Mm-hmm. 2000, 2009, people say you put an e-book up there, you can make a bunch of money. So I'll create an e-book, but then I will not be very dedicated to the project, run a, few, run a little traffic make a few dollars but then i'll move on to the next thing so imagine doing this for 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 seven years where projects are started they are not very dedicated uh i don't stay stay on long long with it i give up very quickly and many times i i didn't understand anything about marketing research niche or whether it's aligned to who i am and i'll just jump from one thing to another to another so on average a month i'll make uh you know here here in singapore live somewhere around a poverty line 
So, so the poverty line here in Singapore is anything anyone is making under one thousand two hundred bucks, and frequently I'll make eight hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So, so and I'll eat one one meal a day. I remember being a scavenger in the house, so I just eat up all the food in my mom's kitchen. So <laughs> it was it was it was not a good time. Mm -hmm. So as most kids do, actually, I mean, I've got boys that come home and open the fridge, and you know, they they exactly. take what they want. Exactly. But you know, it, that that stuff doesn't doesn't actually stop. Um, but in saying that, you know, as you were as you were going through this process of like jumping from business to business, I, I'm sure that many people will resonate with this, right? Because particularly when people are starting out, you kind of as you did, you see these. Oh, there's an opportunity here, or there's an opportunity there. I could do that. I could give that a go, um, but but without being dedicated to the project and having a a reason and a and a purpose for why you are so passionate about that, very quickly does the enthusiasm and the motivation to to continue to do it it wanes really really quickly. So yeah. so let's talk about for those people that are finding themselves in that situation where they are. You know, maybe they've done multiple things and I could put my hand up and say, oh, yeah, I've been there. I've done that, too. Um, you know, and I think most entrepreneurs generally will have have had that experience somewhere in their journey uh, to success. How can we help people to understand, like, what are some of the key fundamental things that they should do sooner? rather than later to help them to get very aligned and very specific with what are they going to do you know what, what, how do you wake up in the morning and be enthusiastic and energetic about the day ahead i think it falls down to, to a couple of things right i think the first thing is understanding the values that you stand for i think there's a one thing that, that i that i discovered i before that a lot uh, a beginner entrepreneur especially one that's not very successful puts money and market before self so when I put money and mm -hmm. market before self, I'm trying to say that, hey, you, you know what? I want to pursue this because I think it's a huge market, right? I want to pursue this because I think that there's a lot of money to, to, to be made over there. And very and, and I'm not saying that's not true. You don't want to select a market that is very small. You don't want to select a market where people don't have the money to afford you. But at the same time, you want to align that with your personal values. Like, is mm -hmm. this something that I resonate with? There's one thing that I always talk about in X Factor, which is the idea of congruence and authenticity. Number one, is this mm -hmm. something genuine where you can add add value to the conversation i think it's really critical if you go into a marketplace for example you go into let's say a real estate investing market and you don't like real estate you've never done real estate before but you're going in there because you see that hey these people have a bunch of money it seems to be the trendy thing now i will predict failure absolute failure and actually it is good that you fail because it, frankly you have nothing to add to the conversation authentically and mm -hmm. congruently because but if you have something congruent and authentic that you want to add to a market where you're passionate about, where it aligns with your values, who you are as a person, mm -hmm. right? Then I think it is it is actually something that where you can begin a process of having an X factor. Next, so there's a first key, right? What are what are your personal mm -hmm. values? What are your personal uh, vision? Like, what exactly do you want to create for yourself, right? Is this a place where you can see yourself growing roots? I think that's one thing that's so important. The idea of being grounded, right? People often want to penetrate the market, but they don't understand the idea of being rooted in the market. Rooted means what? I am around, I'm here to stay. You see, the, the one uh -huh. thing that I discovered after a while is that people that succeed in markets, here's a very simple realization. The greatest, uh, the eighth miracle of the world, Warren Buffett says, is compounding interest. Compounding uh -huh. interest is basically allowing your money to, to grow over a long period of time, right? Buffett made a lot of of his money from 60 70 80 onwards right before that he was he was rich but not as rich as he is now so what that means is literally if we do not quit we will succeed but here's mm -hmm. the key most people don't stay with something for very long if you look at you know, it yeah. i was just going to say it's really interesting that you should talk about that because actually in our team meeting this morning we were having this exact conversation and to your point you know most people in this particularly in the the business world or entrepreneurial space they just don't do the hard things for long enough to actually get to the other side to reap the reward they quit to way too soon and and you know in a in this game it is it is a a game of the fittest and those who can um have stamina to stay in it long enough to go okay you know i made that mistake i made that mistake made that mistake but you make subtle tweaks and pivots along the way and yeah. you know sh over time eventually the penny drops and you're like aha that works now that works now that works so yeah somebody here's saying it's a marathon and not a sprint absolutely I would, Absolutely. I would agree with that. 
absolutely i can tell you that that it's, it's, it's kind of funny right because our little industry of coaching consulting internet marketing etc breeds and i'll say this with like just very unfiltered uncensored breeds some of the most impatient people ever it breeds oh. some of the most impatient people are like hey man i read a podcast for five times i'm not rich yet people are like whoa just chill out man you, you see yeah. in business, three to five years is nothing it is the beginning uh-huh. of business right uh you see people stay in business 10 20 30 40 years and, and, and that's in the real world. Sometimes I say the real world. Mm-hmm. Here, oftentimes, you have people do something for three months and they say, hey, man, it doesn't work. And I was there. I did things for three months. I was like, hey, man, I'm not getting $100,000 a month. This sucks. This like, doesn't yeah, work. Yeah. Like, whoa, dude, like, like you, like, that's three months. Calm man. down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see, but yeah. here's, here's the thing. We have a lot of impatient people because they are jumping into niches that they think will make a quick buck. And they want to go in, go out, kind of like flash trading. And I can tell you that it is the ones that enter a market where it resonates with them. They realize this is what I want to do and they grow roots and sooner or later they mm-hmm. succeed. How many podcasts do you need in order to be successful? I don't know. Joe Rogan has thousands. You see some, somebody say, mm-hmm. podcasts don't work. I did five and I didn't get rich. Well, you look at Joe Rogan, right? He did thousands of it. It works. Mm-hmm. Somebody say, blocking doesn't work. Well, some people run very successful blogs, but I sure mm-hmm. as heck didn't write five posts, right? Some, 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 somebody say, Instagram doesn't work. You see, I posted... I, I I posted 10 times and I and, and, and I only have 100 followers. Yeah. Some people have built their following for five to seven years. Everything works provided mm-hmm. you stay. You are authentic mm-hmm. with it. You're congruent with it. You stay. You're something valuable to add to the conversation. People can sense that you're not there just to make a quick buck. And and that's how it works. And, and that was one thing that I learned apart from all the skills I'll talk about. But I learned patience. I learned to match the market with myself. Is this something I really want to do? Uh, is this something I'm authentic and, and I want to stay? Uh, and eventually I found my place. Uh, I, I can tell you that, that speaking and, and, and marketing and coaching this business, and uh, the average lifespan for people in this business is between one to three years. One to yeah. three years. Marketers, yeah. even shorter. Marketers, even shorter. Because you got all these young kids that want to make a quick buck, less than one year. You see a person run an mm-hmm. ad, they disappear simultaneously within the same year. So, mm-hmm. so it, anyone that stays succeeds. I mean, it's it, you're absolutely right. You know, especially I look back now and I think, gosh, I've been doing this now at it for you know ten years, and it does. It takes time. You need to stick at something. You've got to be consistent. I mean, even things like doing, you know, that's why I'm such an advocate for people getting out there finding their voice and actually speaking about it in their own live show because that creates that consistency you get very aligned to it because it's authentically you and you have to do it week after week after week it becomes part of what you do it's embedded and those roots become deep so I I love the fact that you're talking about that like really um, you know making sure that you stick around because a tree doesn't grow big roots by being in the ground for a short period of time you know that 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 tree will have very shallow roots and will blow over when the you know the the next gust of wind comes along you've got to stick at it allow the tree to grow those deep-seated roots so that when the when a a gust of wind does come or a hurricane comes, you know, you're still standing. Uh, And so I love the fact that you're talking about that. And it all starts with this concept of understanding who you are, who do you, what do you want to be doing? What do you really value? And then start building your business around that, not the other way around. Because as we know, lots of people build it the other way around. Oh, I've got a concept. I've got an idea. I'm just going to build that and then find, hang on a minute. Oh, I've built something. I don't even like this thing I've built. So I love the fact that you come at it from, from this angle. Let's talk about like one of the things that you teach, and I know you do this extremely well, is helping people find their X factor. Uh, and a lot of people struggle with this because they'll go like, well, I'm good at, you know, particularly if you're good at lots of things. Like if you're multi-talented and you've got a skill set that's really broad, a lot of people really struggle to narrow down, well, What's my X factor? How does somebody yeah. determine what the X factor is and why is that so darn important? Particularly in today's you know, day and age where, where attention is, you know, we've got less attention span than a goldfish these days, which is three seconds a goldfish has, we have less than that. So how do you yeah. capture attention, find your X factor so that it actually resonates with an audience? 
and an X factor is an alignment of several factors that that link together that makes you the most attractive version of of yourself. Here, but let's start with what an X factor is not. An X factor is not you think you, you putting up a persona and going up there being somebody that mm. you're not. That is really critical. And I want to talk about this also. Uh, the the real reason why why this is very very important is simply because of all of this. It's because video is the world that we live in today, and video mm -hmm. is a double edged sword. You see, video zooms in, right? We use a, a software called Zoom. It zooms into a person. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that that, for some people, is the ultimate tragedy. For some people, that's the ultimate blessing. You see, here's the thing. Everyone has an intuition within them. And when they look at a person that is authentic, right, they can sense it. I don't know why. It could be micro expressions. could be NLP. could be vocal tonality. You have no idea. You just look at a person, you go, hey, I think that guy's telling mm -hmm. the truth. He just gives me a good vibe, you know? And then there yeah. are people who come on and just... Just whatever reason, when they, whatever they say versus the feeling you feel is misaligned, right? And, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, I, I'm not quite sure why. He seems to be wearing a suit in the, in the studio, exactly. But I just feel a little bit off, right? So that is usually a person that's inauthentic and deep down we sense, oh, something not very congruent about this, this person. So I can tell you that that's the first key about video. You don't want to go up there and put on a persona, which a lot of people do, because afterwards it gives people a weird feeling. Some of us have watched that before and they're like, you can tell when a person's authentic, truthful, and, and, and they're being who they are and a person's like putting on a show and an act. So it's really, really mm -hmm. critical. Right? The first key, we, we want to be genuinely who, who we are. Number two, it links in once again to whatever I mentioned just now, right? Uh, you are only authentic if a few things happen. Number one, this is something you really want to do. Like not, someone's not forcing you, you to do this. We can always tell, like you watch Hollywood celebrities, some of them don't want to be interviewed, you can tell. Like they're sitting there, their body language off. So if you're in a market where you don't like the people, don't care about the people, don't want to be there, and, and you are on video, man, man, that's a tragedy. You might just 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 quit. I always tell people, yeah. the place, people like just just quit. <laughs> just quit, right? Because people can tell that you don't like yeah. them, you don't like everything that you're doing. So first key, find something you like to do. Number two, find something where you have expertise in, right? So it begins with the, mm -hmm. the foundation first. So I find, find somewhere where you have ex expertise and passion in. Really critical, right? Because it comes across on video. Number two, expertise mm -hmm. in. So that when you're off the cuff, you're able to speak freely and people can go, wow, I like this guy. Or I like this girl. I think she knows, uh, he knows what the heck he's talking about. So that's another thing, right? Next one, where you enjoy and like the people. I think it's really critical yeah. because how can you have a business where you don't like the people? <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. right? So, so literally one of the things that I teach Right? It's, it's either a qualification, work with a group of people that really resonate with you. I think it's really important, mm -hmm. right? People usually want to attack the market. See, most, most people do it the other way around, right? They want to find mm -hmm. a bunch. They, they, oh, this is a great market, but it's like, A, you don't belong there. B, you don't care about them. C, you don't know what the heck you're talking about. Then, and you'll be on video, man. And these people start asking questions and you go, man, I hate these people. Then, uh, pro, 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 <laughs> don't go into that market. You got a big problem. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to create yourself that nightmare, right? It's like, exactly. oh, the nightmare has begun. And and not only that, the nightmare has begun and it is zoomed in on. I, you know, you, you know, going back to your um, you know, your analogy of like Zoom, you're zooming in. You Everything is exaggerated um, because people can watch it over and over and over again. And if you are in, there's a misalignment, you're not congruent it will come out and there's one thing that this is you know i've learned particularly when doing um videos like this is you have to be yourself because if you don't and you are trying to create a persona that's like somebody else and i read one of your uh one of your posts a little bit earlier today where you were talking about don't try and be like melvin you know yeah. you, 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 i don't want you to be like melvin you don't need to try and be like me you don't need to emulate or or mimic me you just have to be you because if yeah. i was here trying to be like a melvin you know it, it's going to come across as inauthentic and and not gel with a lot of people. And I can't replicate that over and over and over again. Whereas turning up authentically, you know, you can. You, you don't have to put on any kind of persona or cloak. You just turn up and be you. Yeah. Uh, so I really enjoy, um, you know, those three things. It, it, it really it understanding what do I want to do? Um, and, and you know, what, what expertise do I have? Can I actually add this to the conversation? And then... Yeah. Do I actually enjoy the people? Because the worst thing you can do is create yourself a business with 
the type of people you don't actually like. So going through a process like Melvin has just explained where, you know, maybe you even just get a piece of paper out and you T-bar it and you say, well, look, you know, on the right hand side are all the people I don't want to work with. And sometimes working out all the things you don't want is really powerful because uh, it really helps you to highlight the things that you do want. So just get yourself out of T, you know, right now you can grab out a piece of paper, uh, put a T-bar on, on a page and just start noting down. This is the type of person I don't want to work with and these are the type of people that I do and and uh, that really does help a lot of people so once they've got to that point Melvin what is like I know you work with a lot of people like a lot of um, very successful people and you take them from kind of where they are at that point to to exponentially growing their business what are some of the things that you do specifically in their businesses. So maybe you could give us a bit of an insight into what would you do for somebody who's starting out? What are maybe two or three things that you would do for do with them compared yeah. to somebody who's a little bit more experienced, but maybe not quite got things dialed in? What are some of the things, what would it look like um, for them? Yeah, so so I think once you discover uh, the, the market that resonates with you, you have something to add to the conversation, then you start to want to to segment and sharpen the penetration point by which you enter the market. So most people have no idea of what a penetration point is. You must understand, right, that if you eventually pick a market, rarely is a market brand new, which means that like nobody has been there before. Mm. The most generic angle will, will, will work. And if you find such a market, it's probably not a very profitable market. Let's just be real. Okay, uh, so, mm. so to enter the market from a penetration point. So the moment, yes, you have found something that's aligned with you, is something to add, great foundation work done. Now we need to sharpen the penetration point. Penetration point, number one, take a look at your or origin story. What was the story by which you entered like you entered this market? What was your own or origin story? What was your discovery story? Like, how did you get into this? Who are you as an identity? I think it's very important. Some of us are single, some of us are married, some of us are divorced, some of whichever it is, right? What is your, your entry point? How long have you been doing this? Are you a newbie that discovered something? Are you an experienced person? So, so I, I really help them sharpen that origin story. Whether they are new, uh, brand new, or whether they're very experienced, you need that penetration point. Are you a, a female in a male dominated? That might be an X factor. Are you a male entering a female dominated space? That might be an X factor. Are you coming in because you are slightly older or younger? Race, it could be that, or it could be whatever story you have experienced. Are you coming in having worked in this company before? So I give you an example. Let's use Facebook advertising. So you have a lot of young kids out there who are basically teaching about Facebook advertising. Now let's let's say, and I've seen this angle before, former Facebook marketing employee who was in charge mm -hmm. of teaching people how to run ads, finally reviews the secret inside the, see, that is an angle. That is a penetration mm -hmm. point. Because all of a sudden that captures the attention. They're like, whoa, I, I've seen a lot of these guys say how great they are. But here's the guy that used to work at Facebook and he was uh, he was he was approving ads and guiding people. Now that's an interesting penetration point. So so that is sharpening the story and finding that hook, that 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 that, that real angle, right? It's more than just a hook because the moment you find that point, you can build everything around that. I I I like to think of this penetration point as back then in war where where there's a wedge, right? You drive that wedge uh -huh. in and then it splits the defense. So that is a really critical thing because it's something you can write all the way in or all, all throughout. You can build your whole business around, around that. And that's how, like, like you look at Robert Kiyosaki. He built his whole business around what? Rich dad, poor dad. That was his penetration point. Mm -hmm. What's he teaching at the end of the day? Real estate investing, cash flow investing. How many books are there on mm -hmm. that? A lot. But he went in there mm -hmm. with an interesting angle. I had a poor dad that was a teacher. I had a rich dad who taught me this. And then everyone just remembers that. See, they don't remember the content. They remember the penetration point. So very, very, very mm. critical. Uh, you you got to have that penetration point. And there's a story you tell over and over again. I always say that people buy the intangible. They don't buy the tangible. So right mm -hmm. now, one of the stocks that, that is really hot in, in the market worldwide is Tesla. But Tracy, I want, to, I want you to understand, you know how long electric vehicles have been around? They've been around since the 70s, the 80s. It is a car with a battery. It is not yeah. a like, whoa, whoa. I never thought of that. Long time ago, people went petrol, car, a lot of exhaust. Mm -hmm. Well, let's put, use a battery. Not a profile idea. But what Elon has done is he has made it sexy. It is his penetration mm -hmm. point. He's the modern day Iron Man, the modern day Tony Stark. He wants to conquer, colonize Mars. He's, he's cool. And that brings a lot of attention to Tesla. Now, imagine if Ford did Tesla. Mm -hmm. Not so sexy. Mm -hmm. Not so sexy. Why? Ford, eh, kind of bo boring car brand. Not as sexy, right? So so Elon has successfully made Tesla, electric vehicles, 
sexy. That's his penetration point. It's him. Mm -hmm. He's built on his story, right? It's all of, all of these things. That's why you got a lot of Tesla fanboy and fangirls who are just like, yeah, this is a, a great oh, yeah. So. And what's interesting about that, Melvin, is that, uh, you know, when you, you, you put two of those vehicle, you know, those vehicle companies side by side, motor vehicle companies, and you're looking at the likes of Ford and then you're looking at Tesla, right? One thing that he's done based on what you've been talking about is he has created himself as the front man, as the attractive character. He's got the penetration point. He's got the story behind that people buy into. And now he's made something old, new, and sexy, right? So he's taken, taken something that's, like you're saying, it's not a, um, you know, red ocean, blue ocean kind of kind of scenario. He was actually in a red ocean, loads and loads of other, um, you know, car manufacturers. But what he did was then create his own blue ocean with that, wrapped the story around it, wrapped himself around that brand, made him the center point for it, created that penetration point with his story. And all of a sudden, you know, um, cars that uh, are run by a battery operated are now sexy, you know, are now the new yep. uh, up and coming thing. So it's, um, it's a really interesting i mean that's a great example of utilizing this and creating the story around you and understanding who you are and that you can use that as your x factor to create the penetration point in any market um as you say you know and the key being obviously that we want to love that market uh, so much that you want to stay in it for a long long time one of the other things that you do is you help people to really you know, there's this, this concept of you can do low ticket or you can do high ticket. And of course, in a lot in the marketing world, it takes just as much effort to, to promote something that's low ticket as it does to promote something that's high ticket. Maybe slightly different strategy, maybe a slightly different way you do it. However, the amount of time and effort it takes to do that is the same. What, one of the things that you talk about is how do you get people to raise their prices and actually sell a high, a premium product without feeling shame or guilt? Because what, that's, that's kind of the thing that a lot of people, oh, I don't feel, you know, I feel bad for taking that amount of money from people. I, I, I feel shame around that. How do you get them over that? Yeah, so that's a fantastic question. I, I see that this entire market is is and i'll use the word polluted this entire market is polluted with uh, with people who are obsessed with high ticket but not not obsessed with the polar of that right success happens in polarity high ticket is mm -hmm. so the world works in a, a law law of cause and effect high ticket is the effect the cause which is what triggers high ticket is high value i think there's one conversation that is never had right what exactly creates and makes people want to buy at high ticket is high value first so if you don't have high value, you're not going to have high ticket. Things very, very important. So the first thing that gives people the congruence and the confidence. First of all, I charge between 25, 30, 50, even up to $100,000. Mm -hmm. I have a project right now that's made 13 million Sing dollars, which is uh, similar to Aussie dollars in the last three years. And my partner in that project has paid me uh, seven figures and counting in commissions. And that's my side project. So first and foremost, do I deserve every cent of it? Hell yeah. I deserve every single cent of it. Why? Because of the amount of effort I put in, because of the constant up upgrades that I do, the sacrifices that I make, the fact that I'm willing to invest in myself, the fact that I genuinely know what the heck I'm talking about. So I become a high value person. And I think mm -hmm. if you don't genuinely feel that you're a high value person, and we keep going back to the same idea this like uh, in, in this conversation about an, an X factor, right? There's so many marketing things that I can teach. And, and I always put that secondary to self. When I do my three-day expected marketing class, I devote all, 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 all the way. I start at 9.30. I go all the way to at least 2 o'clock, right? Sometimes I mm -hmm. go for very late lunch. All the way to 2 o'clock, all on self. Because why? Because you are an extension of the business. If you don't like what, what you do, you're not authentic. You don't really feel that this is what, what you want to do. It's going to show and it's going to kill. So I think it's really critical that you become a high-value person first. So that's why you pick a, the, the right market. And then the next thing, you genuinely have proof and expertise to the degree mm -hmm. that when you go out there and you put together something and you tell people, hey man, this is worth 25 grand, this is worth 20 grand, this is worth 15 grand, this is worth 10 grand. Number one, you feel it's worth 10, 10 grand yourself. I think that's really critical. You see, before we talk about an, an offer, we have a lot of people talking about offer stacks and funnels these days. Uh-uh, that mm -hmm. is way down the, the bottom. First thing first, mm -hmm. as you put together this offer, what a great question. Would you buy this? Mm -hmm. What a great question. Let's say you're yeah. on the other side. Would you buy it? Do you genuinely deep down feel it's worth 10? 
Do you genuinely feel that you can del deliver at least ten thousand dollars worth of value to the degree that the other person at the end of which concludes, "Hey man, this was worth at least ten grand, or actually worth fifteen, twenty? This was a great deal." If your answer is no, you need to revisit either your offer or yourself, or probably mm -hmm. both. And I always mm -hmm. tell tell my clients, you see, great marketing methods cannot cover for a lack of congruence, proof, and delivery. Because mm -hmm. you see, Tracy, the, the the game doesn't end when I charge 10 grand and you pay. Uh -uh, it starts. Because after you pay, you're going to want a delivery. And then what if the person... Yeah. Question, what if a person pays $25,000 and discovers that you're worth $2,500? Now you've got a very pissed off customer who's going to write a lot of shit on ripoffreport.com. Mm -hmm. They're going to go up, go, go up there. So that's not good. So, mm -hmm. so before you do that, are you the right person? I you want to charge twenty five k? Are you a twenty five k person? You have then twenty five k of proof. Have you actually genuinely done that yourself? Have you coached people to mm -hmm. do that before? Next one. Uh, do you genuine? Will you buy your own offer? And then next, right? Do you feel that you can really do this person right? So after they they pay this money, uh, they can get a result. Now, what happens when you have all, all of these things? I tell you what happens. Your sub communication becomes a lot more confident and congruent, and you know, hey man, I want you to pay the twenty five because I know. First and foremost, you're going to get way more than that. This is a deal of mm -hmm. lifetime. When it happens on Zoom, the level of congruence and belief extends. It's, it's almost as if, like, when you're talking about, you know, guilt and shame, when you're putting your offer together, when you're putting, you know, your product together and you're asking yourself those questions, you should feel as though you're being ripped off. You know, if you feel like, wow, this is, like, amazing value, it's worth it, I feel so, um, at, you know, at, at, at proud to put this out into the marketplace because I know without a shadow of a doubt that it's congruent with who I am. I have proof that I can deliver and I actually deliver. So not just after the sale was made and it's like, oh, thanks very much, got your money, thanks for coming, that you actually can follow through and you can take your students and your mentees through an entire process to get them a result, not just you a result, but get them a result. And, you know, if you can do all of those things and it feels like you are giving away a massive amount of value, then, you know, you tick, 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 I'm, I'm doing the right thing here. If you can't answer yes to any of those and it just feels like you're talking about, you know, even video, you know, if you, you could do this, record yourself talking about your offer on video and then go back and watch it and watch how you deliver it. Did you deliver it? What, are you confident with it? Do you do you come across as though you believe in it? And if you're watching yourself back and you can you 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 can see that maybe there are some gaps there, then I would invite you to go back to the drawing board, you know, and maybe it might be a you need to do a little bit of work on self uh, to believe in what you're doing. And a lot of time that is um, that is one of the issues that I find a lot of entrepreneurs have is that you know, they, they don't necessarily believe in themselves. They can actually deliver all of those things, but they have a self-limiting belief problem that needs to be real, realigned and readjusted yeah. to make sure that they're on track because your business will never, ever grow past how much growth you've had you know so if you don't but if you're not being the type of person that can deliver that 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 even though you might not be there yet so you might be at six figures building yourself up to seven figures start being that person today that actually runs a seven figure business and before long you will have it so i, I i'm i love that um you also talk about you know how do you so once you've kind of got over this this idea that all right, I'm going to create myself, a, you know, a product that is in direct alignment with who I am. It's It's got all the right elements to it. How do you then get folks to pay that amount of money without necessarily bat, bat an eyelid? Because I know you've, cre you know, $13 million in sales doesn't come through like having to beat people down and convince them that, yeah. you know, you should absolutely buy this. How do you do that really effortless, effortlessly and 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 easily how, how does that happen so i think first and foremost uh, people get very obsessed also over the closing mechanism so some of the closing mechanisms include like a webinar better it's a one-on-one -on -one sale better which which exactly is better let me tell mm -hmm. you it doesn't really matter right i do a, a webinar right now two hours and i get up to uh so my record this year was in january this year i did a two-hour presentation it was on just live on zoom i made 1.4 million sing dollars 
And sometimes, and, and there was on the presentation, there were thousands of people at the end of which it was a $15,000 product and people rushed to buy it. You, you, you can, you can do, do the math there. Close to 100 people bought it live on the spot. $15,000 just in one presentation, right? And sometimes you can do it over a phone call. So, but it all follows a certain flow. First flow, mm -hmm. they need to feel that they are qualified for this particular mm -hmm. thing. I think it's really important. First key qualification. Uh, I think a bad, bad presentation, a bad phone call, a bad sales call, is one where the person does not feel, first and foremost, are you speaking to them? I think it's mm -hmm. very, very, very important. If they feel that you're speaking directly to, to them, and it's very important, that's why when, when I teach, I tell people to, to really structure and qualify who are they speaking to and let people know up front, I'm talking to this group of people, I'm not talking to this group of people, right? So mm -hmm. I'm very clear in my presentation, for example, let's say for so I've, I've, I have a couple, two or three businesses, and the first one, right, if, when it comes to X Factor and I coach people, I tell people I'm only looking for speakers, trainers, coaches, consultants, marketers. That's it. You belong in this mm -hmm. category, I'm going to speak to you. If you don't belong in this category, someone say, no, I'm in, I'm in manufacturing, I'm in construction. Uh -uh, I'm not your guy. No experience there, never done it before, no congruence at all, please find someone else. Right. So what that does is, and, and then the next thing I tell people is I'm looking for people that are doing either uh, have a desire to do high six, seven or even eight figures. I say, if you mm -hmm. want to make a side income, you want to make an extra thousand dollars a month, I'm not your guy. I'm not a part-time guy. So right there, I qualify the audience even further, right? I say, who here belongs in that category? So only high six minimum, seven or eight figures you work with me. If you just want to make uh, an extra one, two thousand, you want to have a side income, I'm not your guy. Find somebody else. A lot of people online, they want to do that. Last of all, I say, how many people here genuinely love and, and care about your clients? And genuinely wish to more importantly than make money, wish to add a lot of value to your clients. If that's you, then stay stay with me. And what I immediately do is I segment my audience. I think that's really crit mm -hmm. critical. I say, how, how many people resonate with all the three things that I mentioned, right? So all, all of you people with a hand raise, I, I want you to understand you came here today for answers and you're about to find them. And for everyone else, uh, they, are, they are not my audience. I think it's really important because a lot of people want to go into a presentation and want to make everybody happy. You will never make everybody happy. And the first key I, I do is when I see a crowd of a thousand, now, remember, I genuinely want to add value, but when I'm doing a sale, I am looking for out of this thousand, the maybe the hundred, the hundred and fifty, or two hundred people, or at best two hundred fifty people that I can help. Now, what do I care about the seven uh, seven hundred fifty other people? I'm not saying I don't care about them, but I think they can be best served by somebody else. I think that's mm -hmm. really, really important. Now, here's a bad presentation: mm -hmm. a person that appears to sell to everyone. That is a bad presentation. Yeah. So I go in there mm -hmm. immediately. I start to segment the, the the people. Now, I don't do that when I'm teaching. When I see teaching and selling are very different. Teaching is mm -hmm. a very inclusive process, right? Because when we teach a class, let's say I have a class now and I used to teach or so, right? When I teach a class of 40 people or when I used to teach one of those kids programs with 120 people, I'm not segmenting people. I'm not saying how many people are here are rich. Well, if you're rich and smart, please listen. When you dumb and broke, you stand in the corner right there. <laughs> yes. I'm just not going to acknowledge you. So that's not good for teaching. Teaching is an inclusive process. But sales is an exclusive process where you want to start looking at who specifically you want to serve and everyone else can be, it's not you ignore them, they can be best served by somebody else. Mm -hmm. right? So I want to focus this mm -hmm. on these people. Now, when, once I focus, step one, focusing on these people, qualified people. Num number two, awakening them to the problem that they face. Mm -hmm. You have to understand one of the things that I mentioned, Tracy, is that everyone does things not from pleasure, but from pain mm -hmm. and problem. Really mm -hmm. important. Right. Uh, I, I see the world, especially as a marketer, might not be very pleasant, but I see the world through the lens of pain and problem. You see, we go to the washroom because our bladder's full. We eat because we're hungry. We work because a lot of us need the money. So so people and, and to the degree that we we do it to the degree that we solve our problem. You see, mm -hmm. we drink water to the degree that our thirst is satisfying. But then once your thirst is satisfied, you don't drink any anymore. No one will say, oh, no, I'm drinking water out of pleasure. Right, so mm -hmm. I think it's really critical that you understand that every single person who has made a who has made a decision to come and attend your program, listen to your pitch, go get on a sales call. They are not there for your charming personality. They are not there for your super uh super good looks. They are there because they have a problem. They have a problem of two things: mm -hmm. number one, they are aware about, or number two, they are not yet mm -hmm. aware. If they are aware about, you have to uh, let them understand what is the problem, what is the cost of staying with the problem, and what mm -hmm. is the pain they are now now going through. To which you then ask. If they want to make a change now the next thing is some of them are unaware of their problem which is why i had a mentor a long time ago right and, and one of my mentors said that one of the things we have to do is we are not in the product selling business we're in the problem selling business we have mm -hmm. to awaken people to understand hey at the end of the day i have a challenge and here's what this challenge is causing me right now someone 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 is unhealthy and maybe not even aware we have them un understand that currently their, their weight is way over a certain limit and for every 
day, they remain in this way. They increase their chances of diabetes, increase their chances of heart, heart problems. And here's a real cause. They shorten the time they have on earth and cause pain to their loved ones uh -huh. should anything happen to them. And suddenly I just awaken you to a problem and a pain. And so you start thinking, wow, that's true. There's a point, uh -huh. right? To which then I say, like, is this something that you want to stay with? Because if the answer is yes, you want to stay, stay with this, then we can hang up right now and don't have to have, to have this conversation. Right? But if they say, you know what, perhaps I want to make, make a change, you say, okay, cool, what kind of change are, are, are we talking about? And they describe the change. Right? They describe, mm -hmm. you know what, ideally I want to be over here. You, then you test them and say, it's true, like, 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 like for real, for real. Right? And now, yeah. now, now, if they agree, now we have, we have two coordinates. See, if you have ever used Uber or, or Lyft in the US before, or, mm -hmm. or here in Asia, we have Grab, you realize that they don't allow you to book the cab unless you have two coordinates, the present location and the eventual destination. Mm -hmm. So right now mm -hmm. we have two locations. We have the present problem and the eventual promise. Mm -hmm. And right there, we have the middle, we have two coordinates, they are, they are marked out. And what we do in the middle is we guide people through understanding once we, they understand their present problem, they're committed to solve, and the present problem is they're, they're committed to, to, to reach. Now, we guide them on how our product, service, coaching, whatever, can guide them from step A, problem A, where they are now, to promise B. We connect the dots to the degree that mm -hmm. they understand. Now, when they connect the dots and they can see that this can get them there, then that, that, that is an awakening. Right? And Beautiful. we have the, the value of this journey. Right. So first of all, if you stay in your current situation, bad things will happen. Number two, you never reach a promise. And most of the time, conventionally, this entire process of getting from A to B will take you this length of time and this amount of uh, of money. But I can get you there quicker, faster, better, and and this and and, and get you to the promise of which you can uh, uh, enjoy your ideal life. And here's how much mm -hmm. is uh, it, it will cost you. And once they realize the value proposition. And then it starts to become a no brainer. Uh, well, you know, the, the good thing about this particular process, Melvin, is that it all actually starts through mutual respect. And so when you were talking about, right, so what, you know, I'm working out who is this for and who is this not, you're actually starting at a place of respect because you're respecting that person's time, you know, their, their willingness to be here, and you're giving them the opportunity to get off the bus now and not waste their time. And I love the fact, and that creates that mutual respect. I'm going to respect you that maybe this is not the right place for you right now, but hey, somewhere, you know, maybe somewhere else um, is, the right, is the right place. And it helps them to actually move on and get the help that they need much, much faster. So I love the fact that you start with total respect and then getting them to the point where, okay, now we've got to awaken you, awaken to, you know, this, you got a problem going on. And so, you know, we go from respect to now, now we're talking about truth. Let's get real here about you got a problem and that you want fixed. So we're meeting them where they're at. And then the third thing I love that you do is you're creating that bridge. You know, okay, I know now, like you say, you've got those two coordinates. I know where you are right now. I know where you want to go. I can help you build that bridge. And here it is. You know, you get on here. I can take you from, you know, this island to that island where you want to go because now we know what those coordinates are and this is the bridge that you need to get on. You know, is it is it a, uh, you know, is it a is it a walk bridge? Is it a swing bridge? Is it a, you know, a, a train bridge? You, you, you now know what type of bridge you need to build for them because you understand where they're at and where the heck they're wanting to go. Super, super important. So if you don't do that, you know, you're going to be getting in your Uber and you'll, you like you, I, I, some of you guys might have had this experience, jump in an Uber and you're thinking, gosh, I know how to get from here to there because I'm only going from, you know, S Southport on the Gold Coast to Surface Paradise, but yet the Uber driver takes some back roads that take you, you know, to, to try and make the fare longer. That's essentially what you are you are creating if you do not have those two coordinates you are going to be expecting to get to the destination but you're probably going to be taking a very long way round which in some cases can create the nightmare so i want to um i want to give you the opportunity to give the the audience anything else that you think is really important for them to know at this point look i want to tell everybody that melvin um, has got a lot of stuff on his social media he's got um some great programs available so if you do want to hear more about melvin where's the best place for them to go is it to, for them to jump on and, and friend you on facebook or uh, yeah. or somewhere else 
yeah, I think there are, there are two places that, that people can find me. They can find, find, find me on Facebook, Melvin So, M E L V I N S O H, uh, or else you, you can type that inside Instagram. Uh, my, my handle is the great Melvin So. Uh, you, you know, a little bit tongue in cheek there, but, but yeah, uh, I provide a lot of content over there. I think uh, there, there's a lot of deeper conversations to be had. In the area of marketing, in the area of all of the, these kind of things, uh, I think it's really, really deep uh, that that we can dive in. But I've done my best to provide people with the foundations of it because I feel mm. that if you put tactics before foundations, that is the beginning of problems. So foundations yeah. first, right? Because you want to select the right market. Because if I look back upon my story, what what caused a lot of struggle back then? was a lack of foundations. I, I was not headed in the right place. I was not aligned. I didn't understand a lot of things. And and, and you, it's very hard to succeed. It's very hard to get to your destination if you're headed in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, however, in this industry, a lot of people talk about right, oh, car speed. You know, how quick is my car? How amazing is my car? Etc. I tell you that car speed is less important than uh, direction first. Whether you're taking the mm-hmm. right road, is this a place like destination? How about that? Right? Is this a is this a worthwhile destination? Are we headed in the right direction? Are we going mm-hmm. to this place where it really aligns to us? And when we have all these things well set up, then we can talk about how nice is the car, how fast is the car, uh, what what road do we want to take? But if we are we are putting the car first, but we don't care about our GPS, our coordinates, and we, and we don't even reflect upon is this a worthwhile destination? That we are lost, lost yeah. metaphorically or lost literally. And we would never get there. And it would be a tragedy to be lost in a fancy car. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to say thank you so much for being on today's show. You've given an amazing amount of value. I also want to let everybody know if you uh, you do want to go and check Melvin out on his website, go to Melvin at enlightenedprofits.net. Go and head on over there. There's some other cool stuff that uh, that he has available for you there. And, of course, you can also uh, – you can – friend him on Facebook and also go and find him at the at uh, on Instagram and uh, make sure that you continue to follow him. He is somebody that you want to to make sure that you are following because he's helped so many people. And if you really truly want to unlock, you know, the profits, the the excitement, the pathways to creating an amazing business, then Melvin is also somebody that you're able to help. Um, without saying, you know, it makes sense for me to, to also let everybody know that if you if you want to also so create something like that and I'm the person that can that can help you then you would you would uh you know you would reach out and you would have to chat with either myself or Vicky Helm but equally like I always do I think the right person for the right person is extremely important so here today you've heard you've heard some amazing stuff from Melvin and I would encourage you to go and continue to follow him I want to say thank you to everybody who has uh continues to watch the unlock show you know that that's what we do here on unlock with Tracy Wilson is we want to make sure that we give you all the tools that we possibly can we do not leave any stone unturned we we interview really amazing people that are open and willing to share their amazingness with you so that you too can live your life unlocked so thanks so much and i'm going to see you guys again with another episode of the unlock show next week i'm tracy wilson and it's bye for now see you guys okay,